Hi, welcome to the USA Gov's first Facebook Live. I'm Marietta Jelks, editor in chief of the Consumer Action Handbook, and I'm here with Christina Miranda from the Federal Trade Commission. She's a consumer information specialist there, and we're going to talk to her a bit about National Consumer Protection Week and ways that we can avoid frauds and scams. Before we get started, I want to remind you that we are going to be taking questions from the audience. So if you have a question, Post it in our comment section and we'll try to answer as many of them as we can throughout the session. So, with the, no further ado, let's get started. Christina, welcome. Thank you for being Thank here you. with Thank us so this much. afternoon. We're glad to have you. What is National Consumer Protection Week? So, National Consumer Protection Week is known by its acronym NCPW. It's basically a coordinated campaign to help raise awareness among consumers so that they can take advantage of their consumer rights and understand their consumer rights. Doing so helps them make better purchase decisions, able to handle their money better, and it also enables them to spot scams. Mm -hmm. So this week is the week for National Consumer Protection Week, which is November 5th through 11th. And National Consumer Protection Week works in conjunction with government agencies, national organizations, state and local partners to bring all sorts of resources uh, that are made available to, consumer, to consumers on ncpw.gov. All week, March 5th through 11th, right? Yes. Awesome. Great. So how did it begin? How did this observance begin in the first place? Well, here's what I know. Uh, National Consumer Protection Week started about 19 years ago when there used to be a White House Office of uh, Consumer Protection. Okay. And that office was disbanded and it was decided that it should continue through the Federal Trade Commission in conjunction with other government agencies that we work with. Okay. So why did FTC get chosen to do it? Like what sort of work do you do and how did that connect? So National Consumer Protection Week landed at the Federal Trade Commission because we are considered to be the nation's consumer protection agency. Um, so combating fraud is a crucial component of our consumer protection mission. And we do this through litigation and consumer education, which is why I'm here today. So one of the tools that we have, or the many resources that we have at the Federal Trade Commission are, for example, our consumer.ftc.gov website. This is one of our main websites that we encourage everybody to go to. It's available in English and in Spanish at consumidor.ftc.gov. And you can go there and read our blogs, download articles, look at videos that have to deal with money and credit, uh, jobs and making money, health and fitness, uh, privacy, identity theft, all those uh, types of issues. Uh, we also have another website that's called identitytheft.gov. And this is a really great website that we launched last year. It's the federal government's one-stop resource uh, for people to recover from ID theft. So, for example, if you've been a victim through data breach or tax ID theft or maybe one of your children, child ID theft has suffered ID theft, you can go there and actually get a personalized plan with a checklist, with letters that are already done for you that all, you just have to populate, and it will walk you through this recovery process and give you a personalized plan to recover from it. The other, another great resource that we have is consumer.gov. Now, consumer.gov is very different from the first website I mentioned because this is a more simple and basic website that gives very basic and simple language on consumer protection. It also comes with a read-along feature in English and Spanish that people can read about various consumer protection okay. uh, topics and also comes with a toolkit for teachers. So teachers can use this and teach some of the things in class. And I just want to show you really quick what this uh, website looks like. Uh, so this is consumer.gov, basically. This is the, the logo for uh, consumer.gov. And it talks about, again, how to manage your money, uh, credit, uh, loans and debt, and also about scams and identity theft. And you can download all the materials associated with it, such as this make a budget worksheet on, you know, how to manage your money at ftc.gov slash bulk order. And I also want to just show really quick, as I mentioned, identitytheft.gov. So we have this, we have this consumer education material that talks all about identitytheft.gov and the recovery plan and everything that you need to know. But once again, if you go to identitytheft.gov mm -hmm. online, it just spells out everything that you need to know right then and there so that you can deal with, you know, recovering from it. You guys have so much great information. We just started talking and you just <laughs> blew my mind with so much great information already. If you're just joining us, I'm Marietta Jelts, editor of the Consumer Action Handbook, and we're with Christina Miranda from the FTC. And we're talking about work that FTC does and ways that they help consumers protect themselves from 
frauds and scams. And we're glad to have her with us this week, especially because it's National Consumer Protection Week, and I'm excited. So um, with that in mind, can you tell me um, some of the more of the topics specifically that are covered during NCPW? Well, you know, basically we teach people how to detect, avoid, and report fraud and scams. So we cover the gamut of what I mentioned, identity theft, um, even debt collection issues, how to buy an apartment, how to buy a car, how to get your free credit report from annualcreditreport.com, how to protect yourself online, privacy issues. Um, so we basically are trying to teach people how to become more savvy and informed consumers and how to use their money wisely when they buy products and services, and at the end of it all, how to spot scams. So this is why we encourage people to visit ncpw.gov and check out all the resources that we have there through our partners and see for this week, for example, what events are happening around in their communities that they click on their partner websites. Or if they're interested in consumer protection, there are tools on that website that will help you get the word out. So we have pre-written social media messages. We have articles that you can populate with all your event information and tools and tips on how to get the word out in the media. Fantastic. That makes it really easy for people to just take it and go with it. Exactly. Make it really easy. Yes. So what are some of these things that people can do to protect themselves? We've talked a lot about what you offer, but what are some of those nitty-gritty things that people can do? Okay, so this is why I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, we have a really great publication here called 10 Things That You Can Do to Avoid Fraud. This is available for free, completely for free. It won't cost you any money at ftc.gov slash bulk order. And this offers uh, 10 different tips that you can use so that you can stay ahead of crooks, you know, and avoid the pitfalls of falling victim to fraud or scams. And I'm just going to go through a couple of the, the points here. Uh, number one in this uh, list is spot imposters. So we all know that imposters can pose as government officials, as family members, members of a charity, or maybe from a company that you know. Um, so we're encouraging people not to send money or give out personal information to anybody that um, all of a sudden requests something from you via text or a phone call or through email. So that's a good way to spawn imposter. Uh, one of the second tips here that you'll see here is do online searches. Um, so you type a company or the product name into any search engine and you say complaint or scam or review. You can even search for a phrase that says IRS scam, something that's been happening to you. You can even look up a phone number. And uh, you can see there what comes up and sometimes it'll say, people have reported this company or this product as being a scam. Uh, another thing, and this is very, very crucial because it's happening a lot to people, is number three, don't believe your caller ID. So technology makes it easier for scammers than ever before to fake a call. And it can look as if it's a local call, uh, a number that maybe you're familiar with. Um, if someone calls asking for money or personal inf for information for any reason, hang up the phone. If you think that the caller might be a legitimate caller, Hang up the phone anyway and call back to a number that you do know, especially if they're claiming to be from a bank. That makes sense. Um, also, I just want to mention really quick, I know I keep no, talking, no. but uh, don't pay up front for a promise right here. So some people might call you, for example, uh, to say they can, you can pay in advance for debt relief, for mortgage relief, uh, for loan offers, or maybe for mortgage assistance, that type of thing. This happened to my mother, which who I hope I'm wa who's watching <laughs> right now. Um, she got a phone call once from somebody that said that she had won a motorcycle. Um, and that all she needed to do to claim this motorcycle was to pay some type of tax on it or, you know, some type of uh, uh, charges or something like that. Like a service fee. Like, right, uh, a, a service fee. And obviously she knew what to do because I am her daughter and I talked to her about this almost every single day. Um, and she didn't fall for it. But if you do fall for it, your money will disappear and it's basically going to be untraceable. And the way, if you're having problems with something related to debt collection, mortgage, or anything like that, just take a look at our website at consumer.ftc.gov because that has all the information that you need to learn about protecting yourself from all these types of frauds and scams. That is a powerful little publication. It I is. Mean, it's, it's small, but it's mighty. It has a lot of great information in there. I'm, I'm ready to get my copy, like, right <laughs> now. Um, remember, if you are watching us right now, if you have specific consumer questions or consumer fraud questions, please post them in the comment section, and we were going to answer as many of them as we can. Um, just a couple more questions. Um, what can someone do if they detect fraud or scam or they think that they are a victim of it? What should they be doing? 
That's a really good question. If you spot a scam, please report it immediately to ftc.gov slash complaint. Report it to the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, doing so, uh, your complaint will not be um, responded to individually, but your complaint will become a part of a, a bigger database that law enforcement can look into and possibly launch an investigation to see if we can bring these crooks to justice. Another good point is to subscribe to our scam alerts. We have ftc.gov slash um, scams and you will receive on a weekly basis tips oh, and all wow. sorts of advice that will alert you to some of the latest fraud and scams that are going around there so you can actually read it and then help spread the information to your friends and family about it. Passing the information Passing on. Passing the information on. Awesome. That's right. Um, what if we talk a lot being proactive and you know learning being alert beforehand but if someone happens to be a victim of a scam or fraud what should they do after the fact or how should they protect themselves you know the best way to protect yourself other than you know responding uh, finally a complaint is to keep learning about it and this is why we're offering all these resources today through ncpw.gov and you know our FTC resources is consumer.ftc.gov. Go there and read, you know, and take a look at all the articles that we have on various topics there. And once again, sign up for our blog there, our scam alerts. You can learn a lot of things and you can, again, pass this information on to people that you love and that you know so that we can help prevent a lot of this fraud in the future. It makes great sense to do that. Um, you talked about your mom a little bit and seniors <laughs> are and older people are sometimes more susceptible to frauds and scams. Do you all have anything specific to that audience to help them protect themselves and, or caretakers, anybody like that? We do. Great. Um, so we have this really great campaign called Pass It On, and it's Pasalo in Spanish, and this is available at ftc.gov slash pass it on. Uh, this is our campaign for older people to help them learn about fraud and scams, but also we want them to be the teachers, to pass on the knowledge that they learn because they're very powerful teachers to their friends and their families and their communities. Pass on the information that you learn about fraud and scams to them. We make it very, very easy. Um, we have, through ftc.gov slash pass it on, presentations that are available to download and, and uh, show at senior centers, community centers. Uh, we have uh, this, we have materials that are easy to order at ftc.gov slash bulk order okay. that come with all these articles and bookmarks available. We even have games for seniors to play. They cover topics such as ID theft, charity fraud, you've won scams, healthcare scams, uh, even online dating scams among seniors as well. So. Uh, this is actually a really great campaign and we encourage people to go ahead and take a look at it and download it at ftc.gov slash pass it on. So here's what it looks like. Great. That is a great resource. Yeah. Just very timely. I'm glad you guys are doing that. We're almost at the question time. So if you have a question, remember to post in our comment section and we'll hopefully be able to get to your question. Um, one more question. Where can people learn more about National Consumer Protection Week and the resources available? Just one more time since we're here at NCPW. Sure. Um, so ncpw.gov is a website where people can go to learn about all the resources that we have available to them uh, to get the word out about consumer protection. Take a look at some of the, the, the consumer protection topics that we have there. Inform yourself. Understand your rights. But also please cl click on all of our partners uh, that we have listed there. We have almost 100 partners wow. there that have Sorry. a lot of consumer resources there um, that, that they can offer you. So please go there and click on it and you know just learn more about consumer protection. Fantastic. So we do have questions. Thank you all so much. And we're going to get right to that. First is one who says, I am on the do not call registry but keep getting targeted calls. What should I do? You know, that's a really great question. Um, since 2009, uh, the FTC has, see, has seen a significant increase in the number of illegal sales calls, particularly the robocalls. Um, so the reason is technology, because scammers are, uh, well, through internet-powered phone systems, it's very cheap and easy for scammers to make illegal calls from anywhere in the world. And so they can display fake caller ID information and very, make it very, very difficult for law enforcement to detect them. Um, so we have gone after many individuals and many companies, we've sued hundreds of them, and we have brought over a billion dollars in judgments that we've tried to give back to consumers. And we've also launched several initiatives, uh, such as our robocall contest, in order to uh, ask the general public to come up, help us come up with a solution to help block robocalls and detect robocalls and also to help law enforcement uh, go after them. But we do, we do want to stress 
it's very important for people to be on the do not call list at do not call .gov. Um, if it says our national registry, please register your phone numbers there and you will get less of them. And know that whenever you receive a phone call, if your number is on the list, it is illegal. Please hang up. Don't press one to get off a list. Don't press two or anything to talk to anyone because it could generate other calls as well. That is a good point. Um, thank you, because I think a lot of people are concerned. Like, I'm on here, but I still get these calls, so that clears up a lot. Um, another person asked, can you explain the difference of when I should report to the FTC versus the CFPB? There's some kind of murky water there that people are confused about. So at the FTC, we, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we're interested in combating fraud. So when it comes to like money and credit, jobs and making money, health and fitness, privacy, identity theft, you know, that is basically what we're trying to do over here. So that's what we're trying to encourage people to go to consumer.ftc.gov and take a look at, you know, some of the, the fraud and scams that we're talking about there. We do have a blog there that you can receive. We, we upload cases almost every single day. Um, and talk about the various fraud and scams that are affecting people. So we encourage people to go and sign up for that and also our scam alerts to learn a lot more. I do want to mention one thing. We do have a new consumer protection tool as well, um, military.consumer.gov. Uh, please visit it. It's a really great uh, consumer education tool for service members and their families. Uh, so that they can stay mission ready both uh, here and abroad. It's a very mobile friendly um, resource that people can use and we just encourage everybody to go there and use it. If you have a deployment, you know, if you have, you know, you're, you're moving somewhere, military.consumer.gov can, can help you with any of the financial issues related to all those that's life a, events. That's great because they are often, again, a target um, of frauds and scams and you know unscrupulous businesses so that's great that you guys have something specific for them. Um, another question we had is is there any recourse of what to do if someone has my um, credit or my ID number or my social security if there's someone personal that you know is there any one thing that the person can do if they know a specific person has their information. You should file, you should go to the police uh, with that information and being that it seems you're talking about identity theft mm -hmm. right here, go to identitytheft.gov and start filling out information about your situation so that you can get a recovery plan. They will, they, there are checklists there that will be personalized to your situation okay. and it'll tell you, you know, send this affidavit, you know, uh, contact police, you know, that type of thing. So if you do identitytheft.gov, that should help you take care of most of it. Great. Um, you mentioned a little bit about credit reports. Someone's wondering where is the right place to get a credit report? They see ads a lot of different places on getting a credit report. What What's the right place to go? That's a really great, great question. Annualcreditreport.com is the place to get an absolutely free credit report. You do not have to pay for it. We encourage people to go at least once a year it's better to do it three times a year and, and space them out and pull their credit report from the three credit reporting companies that are there. Why is this important? This is important in case you want to, to get a loan in the future, a home loan or any type of loan. You need to look at what is being reported about you on these credit reports. There could be wrong information on there. There could be fraudulent information on there. Somebody right. could have stolen your identity and maybe open up an account in your name and you don't even know it and maybe you owe a lot of money but you really don't. So it's up to you to make this almost like a personal checkup that you do every single year. This is part of your personal financial health checkup that we want you to do. Schedule it in on a, you know, every spring, you know, every new year or something and take a look at what companies are reporting about you because it can make a whole lot of difference between getting, for example, a student loan with a high interest rate or low interest rate or home loan, etc. Insurance policies. Insurance policies, cars, you know, that sort of thing. <coughs> That's great. We have time for one last question. Um, and it was someone who's wanting to know um, what can they do to protect the, the identity online? I know we talk about identity theft like in the real world, but protecting your identity online, are there any tips that you all offer on your websites or uh, resources? Yes. You know, you really have to, first of all, I want to encourage people to go and get this uh, tip sheet, 10 things you can do to avoid fraud, because in general this will help you avoid 
a lot of fraud that happens both in person and online and on phones. But in general, you know, beware of phishing. Beware of emails that seem as if they're coming from people that you know. Beware of attachments that you're opening. Never give your personal information out or your financial information out, you know, just like that. You know, always be cautious with how you're dealing with that information. Um, you have to be very careful and judicious about how you use this. Uh, so I encourage people to go to consumer.ftc.gov and just take a look at some of the other tips that we have there about uh, protecting your privacy online and, you know, how to be really, uh, how to have a good approach about it. Great. Well, that has been great. We have any other thoughts about National Consumer Protection Week or um, consumer protection in general? So National Consumer Protection Week is... Obviously, we're celebrating it this week, but National Consumer Protection lasts all year long. So this is why we're here today to encourage people to keep learning about protecting themselves and the people that they love from frauds and scams. So this is why we encourage people um, to speak out in their communities, reach out to their friends and their family about ncpw.gov, go to the resources on there, uh, go to ftc.gov slash bulk order. And Order all the materials that we have there available in English and Spanish so that you can distribute them to your friends and family and community. Um, and also, please go to consumer.ftc.gov and read more about all the things that we have to say about fraud and scams in general. That is fantastic. You have so much great information at the FTC. I'm so excited to just be here with you. I feel like I've absorbed some of it just by osmosis. So I'm just glad that you have so much available to the public. Thank you. Um, overall. <clears throat> well. I hope you've learned as much as I have learned today about consumer protection and all the materials available to you. We at USAGov are really excited to always be your guide to getting government information and resources and tools and practical information. We're available in so many different ways. We're online, we're in print, we have uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook of course, um, Snapchat, and this, as of today, Instagram. And we, um, of course, the Consumer Action Handbook for those who like print. So we just always want to help you get the information you need in English or in Spanish or by phone, whatever method you want, and you get much more information like this from across FTC and many other government agencies, departments, and programs. So I hope you've enjoyed today. I hope you've gotten a lot out of it, and be sure to check out all these resources. Until then, Nick, uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.